Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you as we look for the soon return of the King, our blessed hope at Titus 2.13. We need to, to lean on each other. Uh, we need to be a community. We need, and so that's why I, I encourage you to join our Bible-believing community the best way you can. Of course, you can watch my videos. You can subscribe, you can thumbs up, you can comment below, but there's there's more to it than that. You know, God has given us the tools of online, and yes, they can be used for evil in this world, they often are, but they can be used for good. There's a Discord board uh, I created. Other other uh, channels have their own as well. So, I you know, I would suggest you take a look at, at ours. It is a great community where you can do uh, just messages, People will post, you know, inspirational, um, uplifting images of quotes of about Jesus and about about how we can we can help one another in these last times. It's also a voice chat, so if you're interested, Discord's a great op option for you to get more connected to the body of Christ. To, to you might be alone, you might be a person that doesn't have a church. We welcome you. There's also opportunities to go to to uh, Bible studies. We're starting to do Bible studies, and if you want to volunteer to be a person that does that, we'd love to have you. Also, we were looking for some more moderators as well, and those are just people that spend time on the board and talk to others, um, get to know them, and then make sure, you know, everyone's getting along, and we haven't had any issues, but if you go to bloodchurch-teamjesus, that's on Discord. If you get the Discord app on your computer or on your phone, you can find us there. As always, we teach the blood of Jesus Christ for our salvation. It's what he did on that cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 tells the story. Jesus died for you because he loves you. He got on the cross. He shed all his blood. He was buried and on the third day rose. Just like the Bible says, according to the gospel. The gospel means good news. And so it is the way to salvation for those sinners that are unsaved. So if you're listening to this and you haven't... And, you're, and you have not accepted Jesus Christ's free gift for the forgiveness of your sins. One sin is enough to send you to hell. And hell is not a party. It's, it's darkness. It's eternal fire. And you will be separated from God forever and spend eternity forever. You're not going to just die and not exist. So make the free choice and the best choice you've ever made by accepting the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a belief with your heart on what he did on that cross of 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, and you've confessed that to salvation. All right, let's move on. Go take a look at Matthew. We'll look at 21, and we'll start about verse 23, and it's, it is, um, excuse me, we'll start at 33, not 23. We're going to look at the, um, a parable here, and it's sort of the history of Jerusalem and the Jews in the world um, from Joshua to the second advent, which is, you know, that's a long period of time that, that, that this sort of set of passages will cover. So we're going to look at that. Verse 33 um, of Matthew 21, it reads, the Bible reads here, Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. So you have an owner of a vineyard, creates everything perfectly wonderful for it to run, and then and puts other people in charge of it, pays them or whatnot, and, and heads out of the country to a faraway place. Verse 34, And when the time of the fruit drew, drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen, that they might re receive the fruit of it. Verse 35, And the husbandmen took his servants, and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Verse 36, And again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. So again, they, they, they killed them, or tortured them, or hurt them. Verse 37, But last of all he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. They will respect him, essentially. Verse 38, But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. Verse 39, And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. Verse 40, When the Lord 
thereof of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto, unto those husbandmen? Verse 31, they say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out of his vineyard unto another, unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their season. Verse 42, Jesus, say, Jesus, Jesus saith unto them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 43, Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And, um, you know, it, it's, you know, it's, uh, spiritually speaking, the nation is the, is the body of Christ here. Verse 44, And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And this verse contains both advents, verse 44, separated by a colon you see there in the middle, which represents nearly 2,000 years in time. So Christ is the stone here, not, not Peter. And he is the stumbling stone, as it, as it says, to everyone who rejects him, you know, who doesn't accept the free gift, his gospel. And it's why, you know, at his second advent, he is, he is the smiting stone of Daniel, uh, chapter 2, 44 through 45, if you want to take a look at that. And there's in other places. And he will crush beneath him the armies of the Antichrist, or the New World Order, UN, whatever you want to call them. And it's all there in verse 44. So it's pretty amazing. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake, he spake of them. And of course, you know, you see in this parable, you see the death of Jesus Christ. And these same Pharisees and Sadducees murdered Christ with full prophetic knowledge of what happened to them, just as Judas in John 18, 5 through 6. Um, verse 46, but when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. So, of course, you know, they didn't grab him then. So if we look at this, you know, again, you see you see that the backdrop of Israel had their Messiah, you know, the, the vineyard and the fruits thereof. Obviously, you know, that was Jesus. That was Jesus in the time, and, and he was showing the fruits um, in the spirit. You know, he was, he was healing. He was the great physician. He was the great... Um, he was the son of God, right? It was his inheritance, the kingdom of, of kingdom of, of, um, the kingdom that's to come, the millennial kingdom is going to be his. It's his inheritance, right? He will take his rightful throne at the end of the tribulation. And he came to do it then. And of course he was rejected. We know the story. Let's, let's back up a little bit to verse 33 in the beginning, because there's some interesting things, um, to unpack here. Um, and so you get this parable of the vineyard, right? And and let's this is not just a parable about the kingdom of heaven. Um, it involves the whole world. And, and you know, be, you could see not just the Jews, you know, it's not just a lot of people want to think that's just a Jewish parable. It's not. It's a basic problem of mankind since the beginning, since Genesis chapter three. Um, it's a, it's the attempt of every government, every organization, every king, every prince of this of this worldly religious and educational system governed by evil people to take away God's creation, to take away his inheritance, to take away the inheritance of Jesus Christ um, and to run it for themselves, to try to run a perfect kingdom for themselves. That's why you have those kingdom builders. That's what the Roman Catholic Church wants to do. That's what many of the Calvinist Church wants to do in the Protestant churches. There's not no difference in that regard. But it belongs to the king. It belongs to him that's going to sit on that throne. Amen. Um, it is also an illustration in the New Testament of, the, of Jesus Christ. You know, the story um, of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. The, the, this parable that we just read. And the thieves, you know, what did they do? They took, it, they took the clothing of Jesus. And they stripped him of, a, of his clothes. And they casted lots for them at John 19. You can see that at verse 23 and 24. So... Those clothes, right? What is that a picture of? It's a, of the physical universe. You can see that in Isaiah 40, 22, or Hebrews 1, 10 through 12. Let's go to Hebrews 1, 10 through 12. 
real quick. We'll take a look at that verse. <clears throat> and thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy year shall not fail. Amen. So you can see here, you know, the garment mentioned. Um, and you can see that, you know, Jesus, the day that God will take off his clothes and reveal himself to us is what I just read there to you. But these thieves want to steal that. They want to take that. They want to conquer it and run it for themselves. And it's so sad to see the world, you know, fall into the elite's plans. Very few people, right, have this have this idea of running the world and controlling the world. And now they have minions that will enforce it. You know, there's an estimate that I've heard that's pretty interesting, and I don't know how valid it is. But the elites make up less than 1%, or about 1%. And they hire about 4% of the population to keep control of the masses. Now about five or so percent really understand what's going on with the, with the elites, with the satanic new world order, with the UN, with the power structure of the religious systems and the, and the, and the education systems and the brainwashing and everything else that goes with it. There's a bunch of rabbit holes you could go down. And that makes up the majority of the people about 90%. And there's about 5% of people that under, give or take, that understand everything. And so those small number of elites, you could even argue it's a family of 300, 300 families, control 4% of the population to, and then a lot of the companies and the media and the, and the governments, of course, to suppress the truth and to keep control of the world from the 90% that are ignorant or have not understanding, and also to keep the 5% from spreading the good news, so the, the truth, whether it be the gospel or what's going on in the world. And it's a sad state of affairs that we live in. Anyway, God bless. I hope this message um, hit home. You know, we're close to the end. Keep looking up to the Lord. Don't let this, this world depress you. Um, we're going to put it behind us. We're going to move on to better things. We're the body of Christ. And we, we have a master worth serving and we, we have a, we, um, have a husbandman worth taking care of his field down here. So do the work, um, you know, get involved in discord, go to a Bible believing church, get out and street preach, get out and tell a neighbor about the gospel. Love in action, right? Charity is love in action. So God bless. I hope this was a little blessing on Matthew and the parable and what it means. Have a great day.